This is the Gadget Flow podcast, the show about everything related to products, entrepreneurship, marketing, and crowdfunding. This week, I got to chat with Samir Elkamuni, and Samir co founded a company called Fetch and Funnel. And basically, they help startups and brands have effective marketing across all their social media and marketing campaigns. And we had a great conversation full of valuable tips and tricks, and also what Samir sees on the horizon for marketing on social platforms in general. You don't want to miss this one, so please, without further ado, here is my interview with Samir Elkamuni. All right. Well, I am here with Samir Elkamuni. Samir, how you doing, man? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing great, man. We're excited to have you on the show. And, uh, you know, we just got to know each other, but you've had uh, a relationship working with Gadget Flow, you said, for close to a year now, yeah? Yep. Love Gadget cool. Flow. That's awesome, man. So for people who, who may or may not know who you are, can you just give like a little bit of a snapshot into your your world? And what you do? Sure, absolutely. So I'm the one of the founders of Fetch and Funnel. So we're a we're primarily a Facebook agency shop. So we're one of the top Facebook agencies in the country. We really specialize in customer acquisition, Facebook and Instagram ads. One of the newest things that we're really focusing on, as well as is messenger bots. Maybe we'll get a little bit into that today. And yeah, what what really separates us though from from other agencies the the quality of the Facebook and Instagram work that we do, and and the messenger bots and a few other cool things that like crowdfunding. Maybe we'll get into today. Yes, absolutely. And I have a a list of questions for you, but maybe before we jump into those, we can back up a little bit. And I I just want to you know, get caught up a little bit on maybe how Fetch and Funnel came to be. Like, give us the backstory on how um, you came to co-found Fetch and Funnel. Sure, yeah. So I guess it, it started several years ago. My partner and I worked together at a, a one of the leading companies, WordStream. I'm sure you've heard of them. And we worked over there and gave us a really awesome opportunity to work with just hundreds of 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 agencies, thousands of businesses, literally helping them grow and scale their Google and Facebook ads. And it, it, we really saw that there was a, a need for boutique agencies in the world where highly focused on customer acquisition, really specialized in, in running high quality ads and, and really frankly having transparency with their clients as well. And so, yeah, we, we, my partner and I went our our separate ways for a while. And then after a period of time, we had been talking about it for a long time. We said we should really form fetch and funnel. And yeah, I guess the rest has been history. That's cool, man. That's cool. So I'm kind of, you know, I'm picturing whenever I'm doing interviews on the show, I'm picturing someone who's interested in maybe uh, launching a product or they have a product and they're just not sure how to market it well using those tools. So maybe if you could, like, what are some best practices, um, tricks and tips uh, to marketing products in a really, really, you know, effective way? Maybe one, maybe the top one that comes to mind when you think of that question. Sure. So... I'd say the, this in this day and age, Facebook and Instagram are, are king. So it was used to be Google, but last five, six years, it's, it's made a serious switch. So mm. really, Facebook and, and Instagram ads, I'd say, is, is one of the biggest things. And, and I think one of the other interesting things that's come about in the last two years is, is also using influencers as well. So utilizing... Instagram, YouTube, sometimes even Snapchat, and you can find some of those micro influencers where they don't have a big following, so they don't really know what they're worth. And mm. you can you can partner up with these influencers and pay really really low amounts of you know of, of kind of a partnership fee and and paying them to just tout your product or mention it or you know, even review it, whatever you want to do, you can sometimes send them the product for free in exchange for a review. And if you get those initial purchases from that blip, then really after that, you can have a Facebook pixel on your website. Now Facebook's tracked some purchases and you get to start using Facebook's algorithms to really push, you know, your, your Facebook and Instagram ads, you run retargeting, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. So in that, like, I kind of think 
that can get complex pretty quick for maybe someone who doesn't know much about social media or Facebook or Instagram ads, like more, that's more stuff on the, uh, the back end of it, you know, <laughs> like maybe the thing that the common person doesn't recognize or see. So in that, what is the difference between maybe the difference and the benefits from trying to do it yourself versus using um, an agency like what you guys are doing? Like what, what is, what are the benefits to using an agency um, over trying to figure it out on your own? Well, I mean, the, the easiest thing is you're working with an expert, right? So you're, you're working with someone who knows how to do that stuff. You don't have to figure it out. If you work with the right agency, they're like us, we're super transparent. We're helping people. It, it, we're explaining what we're doing to them, right? So they know what, what retargeting is and how that works. They know what dynamic product ads are. When we set them up, we explain that to them. So they get it. They know what we're doing and why we're doing it. I think that would, that's the most important thing, right? Is, is you, you're learning along the way. You're understanding why, why are they split testing ads? Why are they split testing ad creatives and copy and why are they wording it in this way? And oh, why? Oh, they're splitting out different audiences and demographics and things like that. And why they're doing that? And so I think mm. that's you know that that's a big part of it. And then the other thing is is really you know when when you work with an expert and you work with with an agency, you know the right agency, then you know they can really you'll you'll end up spending less money because if you don't know what you're doing, you can waste and spend <laughs> a lot of money. And right. I think that's an important thing. And, you know, there's, there's a value in that as well. You learn a lot, right? When you spend your own money, you're very careful, but right. you can also, it's super easy to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on any platform or anywhere, any ads, not get any sales or results. And if you work with the right agency, you can, you can mitigate a big, a big portion of that where, yeah, your, your money is being well spent. It's being well tested on, proven copy proven creative things like that and you know frankly if it's if the creative doesn't work you could you know we'll, we'll immediately say that like hey th these graphics won't work or this is not going to convert or people we're not going to get high click-through rates on this stuff so we need to go back and, and fix it or help you help you do it or we'll do it for you and um, those are yeah so I, i'd say those are the two biggest things you can literally learn a lot as well as mm -hmm. save money in the long run and make a lot more money Right. And something that I like that I keep hearing you say and kind of bringing up is this idea of transparency. Um, and I, re I really, I think that's interesting because I do find, you know, maybe people who don't know much about the social media marketing and Facebook ads and things like that, like I do get the sense that it can become uh, easy to almost like feel tricked or to feel like you're, you don't know what you're spending your money on. So how important is it when, when you guys are running a business that's, that's based on, you know, you're, you're taking resource from a company and hopefully, you know, bringing them more resource and resource in return. How big is transparency to you in building your clientele and building your relationships with your, with your clients? It's huge. It's everything, right? I think, I think, if anybody's investigating an, an agency or looking at working with a partner in general, you have to listen to your gut, right? If, it, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> if they're right. guaranteeing something, then there's no guarantees in this business. So that's mm. a red flag. Another yeah. thing is, you know, you want to, you're paying the agency to do the work for you. You want to own that work. So mm -hmm. a lot of agencies will, you know, they'll, they'll build it in their own account and they won't grant you access to it. And you've paid them to do this work and you're not, if you want to part ways, that's their sticky factor. That's the way they retain clients. And so uh, okay. you want to make sure that you, it's, it's your account that they're working in. So if you want to part ways with them, you can just immediately kick them out of the account and part ways and you own all that work. Right? And that, that goes along with transparency, right? You know what they're doing. You can see the changes, you can track the changes and you own all that work. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, and I think another part of that as well is, is, uh, is contracts, right? A lot of some agencies will put you into lengthy, expensive contracts and that's another retention 
way of, of getting their clients to stick with them. So um, I'm not saying that contracts are, are bad. Um, sometimes we're required to do short contracts with clients because it's a build out or something like that. But typically, we don't do contracts. We believe the proof is in the pudding. And so I think that's another important part of, of transparency, right? You want to you wanna retain all the work. You want to know what the heck is going on. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and you, yeah, I mean, I, I think those are some of the critical, critical components. And yeah, and you, you want, you want your clients to be in the loop, right? You, and as a client, if I was working with an agency, I'd, I'd want to be in the loop. I'd want to know exactly what's going on and not scratching my head and saying, I, yeah, I don't really know what they do, but I think I'm getting sales from them. Right. Totally, man. Totally. So pivoting a little bit, what are some of the biggest challenges you face um, in running your business? Uh, I, man, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I'd say one of the things is, is finding really good talent. <laughs> that's, mm. that's one of our, our biggest hurdles. So, I mean, a, a great example is we're doing messenger bots a lot and messenger bots is so new using, using chat bots on Facebook messenger. And so when you're looking to hire someone to assist you with that or, or getting more, you know, just talent on our team for, for that, I pretty much have to train everyone because nobody knows that stuff. But if I want to find a, a Facebook expert, it takes me months to to find and hire a new Facebook expert to add to our team. When I need another Google expert, I can do that next week. There's there's mm-hmm. tons of them, uh, and so yeah, it's it's interesting when you when you find someone online and they say they're a growth hacker and they they're a Facebook expert and you get them on the phone and they don't know what a Facebook pixel is or don't know how to do advanced audience segmentation or things like that. Right. Um, yeah. That, that's one of our, yeah, I'd say that that's one of our, our biggest hurdles, um, you know, as, as we we're growing really, really quickly. And so, yeah, that's, yeah, no, that makes, that makes a ton of sense, man. That makes a ton of sense. So, I, I mean, how about oh, like when it comes to social marketing, I know that we've talked a lot about Facebook. Um, actually, speaking of, I want to ask you, what exactly is a messenger bot? Can you break that down for me as a, maybe a novice? Because I don't know what that is and it sounds interesting. So maybe exactly what it is and what it does. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to see them more and more. And and you may have already seen them and just not realized, but you're literally going to see them everywhere. So it's Facebook Messenger, right? Every everybody knows Facebook Messenger. Everybody's got Facebook Messenger on their phone. They use it to talk with their friends and family and all that kind of stuff. But now businesses are able to to utilize Facebook Messenger as a marketing channel. Mm. And the way you do that is you use a chat bot. So Similarly, if you know, most people are, are familiar with email marketing and you use some sort of email platform like MailChimp or ActiveCampaign or GetResponse or you know, something like that, right? And so it's the same thing. You use a, a chatbot provider that connects directly with your Facebook page and Messenger and you're able to acquire subscribers and it becomes a subscriber marketing channel for your business, you're able to send broadcasts out. You're able to ask people questions and, and you're able to engage with people in a, in a completely new way that email just doesn't provide. And frankly, mm. there's no other channel right now that that has that. Uh, and so yeah, it, it's, it's super interesting and, and because it's so new. I mean, the results that are com- that we're getting from it is is incredible. I mean, if you think about traditional email, you're lucky if you get a twenty percent open rate, right? Mm-hmm. Where on Messenger, we're getting above eighty or even ninety percent open rates and twenty, thirty percent click through rates. And wow. what's really interesting is you can ask someone some questions, and and people love it. And you can do quizzes, you can do all sorts of really cool things. Um, we have a we have a candy client we're working on, just like a a quick couple question quiz where we're going to come up with their candy monster and people can (laughs) figure out what candy monster they are. Mm. And then we can follow up with them with really quirky sequences about, you know, how they're that, (laughs) what candy animal they are. Yeah. (laughs) That's Um, cool. And, but, 
But it goes way more advanced than that. Or in the, in the B2B space, we can qualify leads. We can ask them a couple qualifying questions. And it's totally different than a traditional form. It's totally different than kind of any traditional survey or anything like that. It, it, it's so easy because you just click a couple buttons. Somebody asks you a question, you click on one of the respond, auto responses, and then it, it's just, it's a flowing conversation. You feel like you're having a, a chat. You feel like you're having a conversation, but mm-hmm. it's just fluid. And yeah, you know, it's, it's really, I mean, the, it, it's really, really interesting. And, and it's a, it's extremely quick growing channel. I mean, I feel that Messenger will be one of the the biggest marketing channels there is in the next three to five years. That was going to be my next question: is you know where do you see Facebook ads in general moving in the next you know yeah three to five year period? So you think the Messenger bots are going to be huge? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's only it's only recent that you could even have Messenger as a placement. So. I don't know if people have realized, but inside Facebook Messenger now, if you scroll just past the first couple of chats, you'll see an ad. And so mm-hmm. that's that's new. But the other bigger thing is having Messenger as a destination. So we'll run ads that it's a traditional Facebook ad or Instagram ad, but when somebody clicks on it, it brings them straight into Messenger. And mm-hmm. so that's how you can acquire a subscriber very, very easily. Literally, all they need to do is engage with that with that chat bot and the second they engage with it, they're then a subscriber and they can unsubscribe just as easily. It's like text messaging, SMS marketing. That's been around for a while, right? It's, you can, you can get those blasts, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely, I mean, Facebook's really investing tons and tons of money in messenger it's going to be the future. I mean, you live in New York and you may not have realized already, but in New York, you can hail a, a cab and Uber, order food, get dry cleaning. You can do all sorts of things straight within Messenger. You don't even mm-hmm. need to leave Messenger and you can get a bunch of things accomplished. And that's really where it's going. You're going to start to see influencers and bloggers have the majority of their list on messenger and be able to engage with their audience on messenger and do live video on messenger. And uh, you're going to start to see businesses accept uh, purchases and transactions in messenger. And you're going to see a a lot of things change in that space in the next couple of years. And it's already happening, but um, you're going to see, yeah, you're going to see it change very, very quickly. That is so interesting, man. I have I have not heard of that at all. But even just your explanation of it, just I can already see the uh, the potential there. Um, so m- moving maybe away from Facebook even for a second, because I know it's kind of where we've been. But like, is there still strengths um, in using other platforms, like say a Pinterest or Twitter or e- even Google Ads? You know, like what? What are the strengths in those platforms, if if any, anymore? Like, what do you think about about the, using those platforms as well? Yeah, absolutely. I I think every platform has its has its pros and cons, even Facebook and Instagram. So, and I think most channels are it's it's really specific for your business. So, if you're very B two B focused, if you're you're very account based marketing focused if you're really looking to work with enterprise clients then linkedin is one of the best platforms that you can be on because you can target company sizes specific titles etc mm-hmm. um, if you're a really unique product and people are you know might know about it but aren't really sure about it and they're searching something kind of a broad term for it pinterest can be a really great place for product um, you know, discovery for, you know, of course, Google is always the elephant in the room. Google's kind of that necessary evil that you have to work with if you want to, uh, if you want to get lots of results and, you know, you could get really great results on display and, and Google shopping and things like that. And of course you've got to be on Google search for your own brand and things like that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think for a lot of up and coming brands and, and really cool and interesting products, especially awesome gadgets that you guys feature, people don't know that stuff exists. They're not actively searching for a 
uh, completely automated sprinkler system. <laughs> right. <laughs> but then when they see it, it's like, wow, this is really cool. I could use this product. So Google and some of the more traditional avenues don't really work. And you have to use Pinterest and you have to use Facebook. Um, you know, and again, kind of in the B2B world, you can get interesting with LinkedIn and uh, Twitter and things like that. So yeah, I mean, I, I, again, it's really specific for the business, but you know, if you take put that kind of growth mindset on and, and growth marketing mindset, it's really you've got to test as many things as you can that make sense for your business, and then that's really where you figure out what works and what doesn't work, and then what where you can scale, uh, where you can put more budget behind because you really don't know until you try it. Right. Do you guys provide services for all the platforms, or is your focus primarily like Facebook and Google? Yeah, we, we do all the platforms. So, I mean, okay. we, we started in Google. We've been in Google forever. And, you know, we also started with Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I'd say that, yeah, I mean, the, the in this day and age, Facebook is definitely greater than Google. It doesn't matter if it's B2B and B2C. Facebook really crushes it. We get better results on, on Facebook over Google all day long. But for all the other channels, yeah, we do them all. Like I said, it really is dependent on the business. I mean, some of the, you know, for, for a couple of our clients who are really focused on millennials and even app installs and things like that, we get amazing results from Snapchat because the cost per impression, the CPM, cost per thousand impressions is, is literally one of the lowest that we can get. Mm. Um, but again, it's very specific, right? We have some enterprise B2B clients. We're not putting them on Snapchat. <laughs> right, right. Cool, man. So second to last question, what are you most excited about and what you do moving forward? Like what gets you pumped every morning before you head, head to the office for work? I'd say that the biggest thing is is we're, we're really pushing the envelope of, of what's next. So I'm not, I'm not looking at what, what was the coolest stuff that worked in 2017. I'm looking at like, what's going to work in 2019 because Mm -hmm. I mean, we see it every day. We see what just happened with Facebook, right. And, and all the different things that are going on in the industry. What's next? What's, what's the next platform? What's the next outlet? What are the next marketing channels that are going to really crush it? And I think that's what gets me really pumped up and excited. And that's why I get so excited about chatbots because it's so new and nobody's doing it. It's such an unchartered territory that, you know, it, it's, it's crazy interesting. I think those are the things that, that get me pumped up. I mean, we have a crowdfunding client that we're working on right now and we sent an email blast out last night to their, we're running a pre-campaign for them, right? And so we sent an email blast out for them. They got you know, 20% open rate, 2% click-through rate. It's good. Not amazing, but it's it's good. We got an 85% open rate and a 10% or I think it was 15% click-through rate like within minutes. Like it was, it was instant. And that was, I was pumped about that yeah i mean it was like we were all watching it as a team and going whoa every time you refresh you're seeing you know another hundred thousand people a uh, hundred or a thousand not a hundred thousand but <laughs> hundreds of people <laughs> you know opening that messenger blast immediately and that's so interesting because it, it just changes the game right if you're you're launching a Kickstarter campaign tomorrow and you blast your entire 20,000 subscriber list. If you shoot them an email, it could take them 48 hours to get to that email. You shoot them a message on messenger and ding, they get that notification they care about and they open it. I mean, that that's so interesting and exciting yeah. that, that that's what gets me really motivated is the what, what's coming up next. What, what, what's, what's new in the market? What's yeah. I think, I think that's the stuff that really, really gets us excited. Definitely, man. So where can people connect with you online and where's the best place to, uh, yeah, connect with you and what you guys are, are working on? Um, so, I mean, our, our website's just fetchfunnel.com and yeah, and people can connect with me on, on Facebook always. So Samir al I'm the only one, so shouldn't be too hard to find me. <laughs> you can always send me a Facebook message. Uh, my email, more traditional, even though nobody likes email anymore, is just Samir at fetchfunnel.com. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. You can, like, like I said, you just add me on Facebook and shoot me a Facebook message and you get a lot faster response than you will <laughs> via email. I know you might get a bot. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. I know. That's Double interesting. Questions and answers and, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, but maybe really quick, I'm, I, uh, maybe I can ask you one, one quick question. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I, I'm a big gadget flow guy. I mean, we're, we love gadget flow, both from a customer perspective, as well as a partner. I'm curious where are you guys headed and, and what's next? And what are you excited about in 2018? Man, well, I'm, I'm definitely not, you know, we have Evan and, and uh, Cassie and Mike who are steering the ship on top. So they're probably a better person to ask for the organization as a whole. But for me, I, I do our, the podcast is something I'm excited about, um, and video, we are going to be doing a lot more video, um, and we're really wanting to expand that side of what we do, and I know, um, I'm fairly new to the team, but I do know there's been a lot of work on the inside to um, create a really good team atmosphere. Um, I think there's like, you know, maybe 20-ish people um, working for the Gadget Flow now, all, all working remote, which is... I'm sure just a huge challenge to manage all the time, but they do such an amazing job. So yeah, I mean, for me as a, as a part of the team, those are the things I'm looking forward to is just pushing the limits uh, of what we can do with video and audio. Um, And and yeah, I mean, I mean, I, you know, I have my own projects and stuff like that as well, where this, this discussion about Facebook and, you know, just products and marketing in general, get me really excited um, for, for my projects that I'm, I'm running myself. Um, but as far as gadget flow goes, I think just showing people more cool stuff. I think that's, that's the goal. Yep. And so, I mean, you're, I and mean, we all know kind of the metrics that are coming out as far as video dominating everything now, where, where do you see video going? I mean, do you have any kind of insights or anything as far as, yeah, not maybe and not necessarily like best practices, but where you see some of the kind of video engagement or whatever it is happening kind of in the next year or two. You know, I, I to be honest, it's like I just all I see is the upward trajectory, you know. I just see it moving up and up and up and up. And I know video is I think the the possibilities are pretty much limitless with video. Um, I was just listening to a podcast this morning where, you know, this, it's this guy, this guy is talking about, he has two kids, one is five, one is seven. And he recently had a TV show made about him and his family with like huge actors, very famous. Like it's a, a national televised show. And he said his kids were so not impressed because they're constantly watching video from anyone and everyone in the world. Um, that it, it, beca- it became like, well, they don't even care that it's on TV versus the computer versus the iPad. It's like all the same to them, which is exciting to me because it levels a playing field. It's like b- basically then it turns into the best content wins. If you make the best stuff, more people will watch it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, as far as like what I see on platforms and stuff like that, it's, it's a little bit hard to tell other than it's just going to grow. And I think we're just going to see more and more brands and companies transitioning over to using using video and honestly audio. Like I think audio is the sleeper. Um, that's going to think that's going to be the thing that changes the game um, in a lot of ways is when people can really harness the power of audio. Because what can you do to engage people? Um, when they're not in front of a screen, which is the other massive portion of their life, and that's through your ears. Um, so I do think that there's huge, huge potential in both, and I think we're going to start seeing a lot of innovation in both spaces um, in the next year or so. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I love that. I love what you said. Levels the playing field. I mean, that's I saw the other day that there's this uh, famous director, and he's developed you know, super famous films and blockbuster films and he just did a horror film that you know is in the movie theaters and everything and he recorded the entire thing with his phone and he says the future of video is (laughs) with phones that's crazy i think that's exactly what you just said right like it literally 
just smartphones, the quality of the content you can produce, you get 4K slow-mo cameras and everything. <laughs> I mean, it, it is, right? Anyone can make a, a video. And like you said, it's just the, yeah, the content is, is what owns it, the story that you tell, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's super, super interesting. Or, yeah, people, like, we don't have TVs anymore, or, all right, we're all watching YouTube and... <laughs> exactly man. totally totally different than it was five years ago 10 years ago and it but it's changing even faster now right yeah and the opportunity for anyone and everyone is just endless you know which is great so yeah. samir thank you so much for being on the show man this is a great conversation and uh, i think you really really gave some cool insightful information and i know a lot of our listeners are going to be checking out um your guys stuff so i'll include uh links to your guys work in the show notes and all that stuff but for now man thank you so much for being on the show samir thanks alex appreciate it that was my interview with Samir Elkamuni, so please make sure to check out Fetch and Funnel and get in touch with them if you're looking for help in taking your marketing to the next level. Thanks for being on, Samir. This podcast is made by Gadgetflow, and we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So make sure to check out the site for all the new products we're curating every single day. We'll be back next week with another new episode. So please, in the meantime, go rate and review our show on iTunes. Thank you so much for listening to the Gadget Flow Podcast.